Hello and welcome to the weekly Kashmir University Video Digest Quest. First, let's take a look at the highlights. Interview with the controller of examinations. Kazakhstan ambassador calls on the vice chancellor. And CCAS organizes international conference. Now the details with your host Pina Shali. The University of Kashmir recently declared results of BA, BSc, BCom. A number of students were declared fail, reappear or later on in many subjects. The students, however, resented the declaration of the results and said that there has been gross negligence of the authorities that has resulted in so many cases of failures, reappears or later on. Without fixing responsibility on anyone, the Quest team got in touch with the controller of examinations, Dr. Muhammad Yusuf Bhatt, and put before him the grievances of the students. I think when the result came, so the large number of candidates were getting reappear. And a majority of students were also getting later on. And the result not available, which is denoted as NA. So they were worried that they have failed in the subjects, but they were not knowing the reason that they have done something, some mistakes in the OMR sheets since the whole exam was bifurcated into two parts. One is subjective and another objective. So the objective part was uh, conducted on OMR sheets. So they have done mistakes on OMR sheets. So the OMR could not be read by the machine. With the result, the objective marks could not be added to their theory papers. So they were failing. So that was the major reason. Dr. Bhatt pointed out a number of issues that have led to confusion. The foremost being improper filling of OMR sheets by students, which made OMRs undetectable to the computer. He said that the results were already delayed because of different circumstances. Therefore, they went ahead in declaring results. The exam was commenced. The first sem undergraduate, this exam was commenced on uh, 31st of January and it concluded on 28th of February 2017. Almost 11 months have elapsed. We started processing of its result because the, the Selection of optionals by the subjects also took time. The change of software modules also took some time. So result was delayed. We were in a process to just declare the result because the much time had passed. The controller examination said that the university had already advised colleges to conduct proper demos for the students for filling of the OMRs. He said that the invigilators had been callous in their examination duty and signed the OMR sheets without checking whether the students have marked it or not. A copy of guidelines was sent to all principals with the instruction that these OMR sheets should be displayed and orientation program given to students and on the blackboard they should be shown twice, thrice so that they are familiar with the pattern that how OMR sheets are to be darkened and how roll number is to be written, how series is to be written. So it is lackness, I, I can say that they have, they have not been serious uh, while giving orientation and training the students to uh, at the, uh, attempt the OMR sheets, number one. Number two, that the communication gap between students and the teachers, because it was not the principal who had to orient them, but principal passed on instructions to the teachers and teachers had to instruct and train the students. There is a gap that I agree. Number two. Number two is that once the exam was conducted, we have invigilation staff and supervisory staff comprising of assistant professors and contractual lecturers and non-teaching staff also who are working in our examination centers. So they had to train at that time also to check and see whether the OMR sheets have been filled properly because every invigilator and superintendent has signed the OMR sheet. The Quest team asked Dr. Butt what mistakes students had committed to which he explained in detail. We were knowing that that OMRs have been done wrongly, filled by the candidates. But the question is, there were different types of mistakes. One mistake was that they did not mention the 
question paper series. So no answer key could be applied to assess the result. Number two, some of them have written uh, roll numbers and figures, not filled dark in the circles. It was another mistake. And the third type of mistake was that course code was written in figures and not filled in circles. And another mistake was the, they have encircled the our circles. Another mistake was they have crossed the circles. Another mistake was they have ticked the circles. So different types of mistakes could have been rectified before. But there were certain mistakes which could not, have, could not be rectified unless the result is declared. The, uh, these OMR sheets are identified from 83,000 OMR sheets which we had to assess through the OMR machines. He said that those students who have filled erroneous information on the OMR sheets are being called to correct the same. Within 15 days, the whole result will be, uh, the mistakes done by the candidates will be rectified. But there is still some number of uh, OMR sheets, maybe it may uh, round about 600, where series has not been written. So we may have to get the actual uh, series what has been used, and we may have to contact those students also. But it will take within 15 days, the result will be cleared and result will be uh, declared. Dr. Butt said that colleges have also added to the confusion by not submitting award rolls of science practicals. We have taken up the matter with the Honorable Vice Chancellor that there is lapse on, at college level also on part of uh, supervision in the examination and also delaying in uploading the awards and which was uploaded even after the declaration of the result and uh, appropriate action under rules is being thought uh, by the authorities and that will be communicated to the state government also and the colleges also. The controller examination told students not to worry and assured them that the revised result will be uploaded within 15 days. Process is on, our uh, automation division is at work. Before 15 days, we will declare their result. There is no question of panic. Nobody should, uh, should be worried about this, but the Mistakes have been done by the students themselves, but we are rectifying them since it was first time exposure of the students to OMR and this objective component. So it will be rectified and this will be declared. There will be no problem for the students. They should wait. The ambassador of Kazakhstan to India, Dr. Bulat Sarsandayev, along with a team of Kazakh delegates, met Vice Chancellor Professor Khurshid Iqbal Andrabi in his secretariat. The Vice Chancellor, while welcoming them, expressed his delight on their visit. We re are rediscovering our roots by his, uh, you know, uh, by his, uh, you know, uh, co cooperation and support and the kind of work they are doing. Uh, I really must thank him for this opportunity to meet this delegation. Dean Academic Affairs Professor Musaddiq Amin Sahaf welcomed the suggestion of signing MOUs with the MK Dullati Taraz State University, Kazakhstan. We would identify the common interest, what strength, the competence we have in a particular area of specialization. We will offer our services and you will offer us the services in the areas where you have the competence, you have the competitive edge. So therefore, if the collaboration will be there and both institutions will pool their resources, there is possibility that the general public will get the benefit of it. So that will be the first response. Then at the same time as a dean academics, I would suggest that there should be exchange of students, exchange of teachers, and collab collaborative research from both the institutions. He asked the Kazakh ambassador to help scholars of Kashmir University in getting scholarships there so that it is easy for them to travel to Central Asia. Scholars from Central Asian Studies are working in your uh, country, but they get the benefit only. That benefit is not passed on to the general masses. So we would find it more profitable if uh, other institutions are also associated, both in teaching, research, extension services. So if about some of the students from Central Asian Studies will also get some fellowship, scholarship from your country so that they can visit the country and can at the same time investigate and examine the problem in detail. Otherwise, most of the time they find it very difficult to investigate because of the financial constraints. Registrar Professor Khurshid Ahmed Bhatt thanked the Kazakh delegation for their offer of partnership. You are coming to our university or choosing our university is certainly a great honor to us. 
and it's a great pleasure to us, you know, for the development of your own university. And we are always here to support you, to, to provide you all the resources. And uh, I personally thank you on my own behalf, on behalf of the Honorable Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the University of Kashmir for coming over here, for, you know, meeting us, sharing your ideas, and making an offer to have a partnership. And we accept your offer for partnership. I once again, you know, thank, for, uh, thank you all. The Center of Central Asian Studies, in collaboration with M.K. Dulati Taraz State University, Kazakhstan, organized a two-day international conference on Muhammad Haider Duglati, the golden bridge between Kazakhstan and India. Members of civil society, academics, scholars and students took part in the conference. The conference started with a musical event hosted by the Kazakh delegation. <laughs> CCAS Professor G. N. Khaki, while welcoming the Kazakh delegation, said that the seminar was conceived to explore the past links of Kashmir with Kazakhstan. To explore lost links between Central Asia and Kashmir in general, and the links and the historical roots that we had established over a period of time between Kazakhstan and Kashmir itself. And second, to refer the civilizational and cultural profile of Kashmir that emerged as a result of the contribution of Mirza Haider Duglati during his stay in Kashmir. The distinguished scholar has been a prolific writer who has lived in Kashmir as governor of Jammu and Kashmir for 10 years and has authored a wonderful work that has been deemed as a work source material for all distinguished scholars, Tariq Rashidi. Much before the translation of the same work, Tariq Rashidi, by into English by E. Davison Ross, the passages of the same book have been extraordinarily used by the scholars to prove their historical authenticity and the scholarship in, by referring to the texts that are available in Tariq Rashidi. The ambassador of Kazakhstan, Dr. Bulat Sarsanbaev, stressed the importance of socio-political and economic cooperation between his country and India. You know that Kazakhstan and India, uh, we have good relations, uh, historical relations, and, uh, and during our independence, uh, the last 26 years, uh, you know, 2009, Kazakhstan and India signed uh, the strategic <laughs> partnership agreement. We are strategic partners. Uh, you know that the trade uh, between India and Kazakhstan is the second largest uh, Indian trade with uh, former Soviet Union countries after Russia. Uh, Kazakhstan, the largest uh, uh, economic partner for India among the, from, uh, among the Central Asian countries, even all the trade of these countries put together. So we're still uh, the largest uh, partner, trade, trade partner of India. And uh, politically, we are very close to each other. We support each other on bilateral and multilateral level. Uh, today, Kazakhstan, uh, is a member of the Security Council, and uh, exactly this month, from 1st of January, we became the chairman of the Security Council. So that's why uh, um, e even in this capacity, we uh, already assisted India to, to elect uh, the judge for the International Court, because uh, uh, it was very important, the voices of uh, the members of the Security Council. Vice Chancellor Professor Khurshid Iqbal Andrabi said that the CCAS makes him relive his past and the MOU with Kazakh University will help Kashmir to locate the past. 
it always makes, makes me nostalgic because I start recollecting the past as much here as never any place else. I was nostalgic yesterday also when the Kazakh delegation came and they actually wanted to visit the cemetery of Salatin, which I never knew what Salatin was, but I always knew the tomb of Barsha because I played there because there were no playgrounds around. We always used to play there. Least realizing that these people had to actually visit the tomb of Barsha, which I must have basically visited a zillion times when I was a kid, without realizing that it actually represented a famous personality. It actually had a grave of a famous personality named Mirza Khaidar Dulati. And uh, here I am living to basically give a sermon on somebody who I must have virtually played with. He was only buried, I was alive. And not knowing anything about the history or who we were and how our connections with Central Asia were established. <coughs> And that's why I say that this department makes me relive my past much more than any other department does. Associate Professor of the CCAS, Dr. Tarek Ahmed Rathar, conducted the proceedings of the function. That is all for today's episode. You can log on to our website, emmrckashmir.com, where you can check the latest episode of Quest. You can also send us your valuable suggestions at our email address that is quest at emmrckashmir.com. Before I take your leave, here are a few words of wisdom. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow know what you truly want to become.